Service Podcast. everything that I read, but I'm going to read. They have different, um, you know, they have the scriptures, and they have, like, um, titles, and then they have, like, what they call, what Charles called the commentary, the people that, um, I guess, wrote the Bible, because mm-hmm. they have different translations. I, I got to ask what the commentary means. But the topic is unity in the body, and then um, in the recovery pieces about honesty, Ephesians four twelve through twenty seven, mm-hmm. and I read different. I wake up different times because I'm retired, so I don't know if we're gonna be able to connect every morning unless we set a time we want to do it. I mean, I'm up. I'm up. I, I have my alarm set at five, so I'm up by five every day. <laughs> oh, okay. So, so you could just call me because uh, I'm not usually up at five. <laughs> No, I was gonna say like I would let, like whenever you you know what I mean. I don't want it to be no pressure. I just want to keep it, keep it you know, like you said organic. Yeah. I mean, like I think it. it's a good thing to have that um, connection, and then it just be it's like a discipline. Yeah. If we do it at five or six every morning, and then it I forces wait. you to insert some positive thinking at the beginning. And I can of your always, day. Go, I can always go back to sleep. <laughs> like Jalen and me, I could go to, like now. I could do it. I don't, I understand it at first, but. Yeah, six o'clock is better than five. Oh. Yeah. Okay. It says we may have grown up believing lies about life, about ourselves, about our family. We may still experience confusion and uncertainty because we don't have a strong sense of what is really true. The lies we believe can contribute to our addictive ways. So we need to re-examine our life in the light of what is true. The Apostle Paul talked about how the people who believed in Christ were to function like a single body. Each member is to be mature in the Lord, offering the gifts he or she has to help the whole body mature. Since Jesus described himself as the truth, we are to be filled with him. The recovery process involves becoming truthful, and it says F-U-L-L, truth and fool. Paul continued, then we will no longer be immature like children. We won't be tossed and blown about by every wind of new teaching. We will not be influenced when people try to trick us with lies so clever they sound like the truth. Instead, we will speak the truth in love, growing in every way more and more like Christ. Recovery can be like growing up all over again. As we grow, we are to continue to aim for what is true. In the past, we measured truth against whatever sounded right to us at the time. Now we can have a sure measurement of God's word and Jesus Christ himself. But this pers- from this perspective, we can reevaluate our beliefs. What is true about God? What is true about me? What is right and what is wrong? Mm. And then um, the daily bread is called moving towards maturity. A recent survey asked respondents to identify the age at which they believe they became adults. Those who consider themselves adults point to specific behaviors as evidence of their status. Having a budget and buying a house top the list as being marked as adulting. Other adult activities range from cooking dinner every weeknight and scheduling one's own medical appointments to the more humorous ability to choose to eat snacks for dinner or being excited to stay at home on Saturday evening instead of going out. The Bible says we should press on towards spiritual maturity as well. Mm. Paul wrote to the church of Ephesus, urging the people to become mature, attain the whole measure of fullness of Christ. While we're young in our faith, we're vulnerable to every wind of teaching, which often results in division among us. Mm. Instead, as we mature in our understanding of the truth, we function as a unified body under him who is the head that is Christ 
God gave us his spirit to help us grow into a full understanding of who he is. And he's equipped equips pastors and teachers to instruct and lead us to more maturity in our faith. Just as certain characteristics are evidence of physical maturity, our unity as a body is evidence of our spiritual growth. And it has a question. In what ways are you still vulnerable to every wind of teaching? Hmm. I would say for me, I'm vulnerable when it comes to the program. Because sometimes, or anything that's, that sounds good, that's against what I've been taught. Um, so I can be vulnerable to, you know, that and I have to remember the truth. Even though it might sound good, don't mean it is, it is true. So I'm, I don't know if you want. I'm vulnerable. Answer. I'm vulnerable to comparing, like, looking around me, you know what I mean? Like, what other people do. And, um, whether I feel like I learned that what I know is the truth or not. If I see somebody else and I feel like they're benefiting and they're not living by that, mm-hmm. it can con- confuse me, you know? It can confuse me, especially if I'm not seeing maybe immediate results. Like I said, I'm not seeing it, so I don't know if it's not there, but sometimes, well, I, we know it's not, it's there, but I, I just don't see it because I'm so busy being distracted and always trying, like, I compare myself a lot more than I think I do. So, mm-hmm. and you on you on um, Central Time? Well, yeah, I'm just an hour ahead, or I, mean, I think an hour behind East Coast. Okay. Yeah. So when you call me at six, it's, it's gonna be really five for you. Yeah, it's ten o'clock. Ten forty-eight oh. here. Oh. Okay. And then another question is, how do you continue to grow spiritually? Excuse me. How can I continue to grow spiritually? This staying submerged in, in, in it, because that's the problem. It's like once, like you said, once you feel like you know something, sometimes you, I don't know, you, you, you know what I mean. You stop learning. You know, you stop growing because you feel like you was taught something and you got it, and you know, that's a new. That's kind of a form of new teaching too, because that's. That you kind of turning God's righteousness into your self righteousness, like He gave you righteousness, and you started to convert it into something that you feel like you already have for yourself. Like, uh-huh. I think staying submerged in it and like this, and focusing on it more than I do already, it's going to strengthen that. Of course, it has no point, no choice. And for me, it's like um, continuing to be open. Mm-hmm. to new ways of growing and I can get into a routine which is good you know it's a good discipline but you know every now and then I need to add something to that ritual or that because um, mm-hmm. I have a certain you know I read my daily bread every day but it's not like every day at 6 o'clock you know mm-hmm. so that's a new that would be a new stress for me and it would have more discipline not that what I'm doing is not fine it's, it's fine it's just, it's good to have a discipline. I know I, I don't have a meditation meeting at 8.30. I have a Sunday through Saturday. And I don't know if it's 8, 8, they say 90 meetings in 90 days. So I'm going to try to do this meet 90 meetings in 90 days. And the meditation part is the reason why I chose to do it. It was really helpful. It was a really good discipline because the thing about that was I could be in the bed and do it. Mm-hmm. You know, I didn't have to get up and get dressed and go out and all that help. But at the same time, you know, sitting still, you know, I can always find something to do during the meditation time. That kind of like forced me to be still. Mm-hmm. And I think it's like 15 minute meditation and then 20 minutes on Saturday and Sunday. So yeah, just um, that. So that'd be good for me too to um, change my routine a little bit. Even though I'm retired, like I said, I can always go back to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> and then it says, "Loving God, you are the author of my growth and maturity." Please help me to see where my understanding in you of you is still immature and teach me more of your wisdom. That, that sums it up right there, because I was about to just I was just about to say, I'ma need some help with this. <laughs> it's like who you ask, you ask him to help you. 
I like they had those questions at the end. They haven't always had that in the daily bread. And I like the daily bread because you get to know the people because they talk about their, their stuff as a guy that lost his daughter in a car, girl, bad car accident. She was a kid. He was 17, I can't remember, but he talks about that sometimes. So it just helps me to see them as real people mm-hmm. opposed to um, just writers. A typical devotional, you know what I mean? Just yeah, sometimes. Just all religious stuff. You know, it's like they talk about, I like people that can talk about themselves and put themselves in the equation and then talk about God. You just always talk about God. Sometimes I have a tendency to tune you out because I feel like you're trying to force something to be religious. Yeah, I feel about, like you're saying something you heard. Right. It sounds more cliche, but yeah. when you talk about how you went through something, I think God brought you out. Then I can relate like you my antenna's up now. Yeah. It's like, okay, so he, you know, it's not no white man just talking because I know he's a white. I know the guy is white. <laughs> but I like, they have white, they have different um, cultures. I'm not sure they have any black people. They might have some, but um, I remember seeing pictures every now and then. They have pictures of them in the back because I'm always looking for black. Everything, I want everything black. I'm mm-hmm. pro-black. But, um, so that helps too because I like to know who I'm getting my information from because sometimes I don't feel that they can really relate to us even though we might have the same similar experiences. Mm-hmm. And then at the same time, like even if, even if, like I said, it works, you never know how how much more, what more you could get from a black person. You know what I mean? You never know like what it would be yeah. like. That's what I think about sometimes when I get taught stuff. I'm like, I could get taught this and I could still like kind of know the right way to do it, but it's a there is a black way to this because we have different. You know what I mean? We're different, so we have to. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I I can learn the same thing from a black person and I still have a I have a new understanding of it because it's. It's a it's a way for me to operate in it now instead of just you know because they talk real general they talk like everybody know what's going on already right because it's like it's a white it's a white America what they consider is America and then it's Black America mm-hmm. you know but if you never and it's watch on us, it's on, they leave it to us to, to to give us what we need they don't right. what they, you know what I mean they don't give all the Americas the same. It's the same thing, you know what I mean? We got to get ours for ourselves, and that's why it's like, like I said, you can hear the same message from a white dude, but the like that black dude gonna give you what you need to know about it. You know what I mean? Like what you, what he didn't say, basically. <laughs> and it's a balance because you know because we're so extreme society is so extreme that it's like you know being around all my people all the time can be annoying because some of them you know are ignorant mm-hmm. and then being around them all the time is is annoying because they can be ignorant to mm-hmm. what I go through as a black person is you know so it's like being having the best of both worlds for me I just try to be open because I love my all my meats I don't see myself without them and the majority of my white old women mm-hmm. so I get what I need you know, when I feel like I'm not getting what I needed, I have to go other places. That's like with anything, like we were saying yesterday. And I can't continue the conversation much longer because I got to go for my walk. Me but, um, <laughs> but I did want to do that. And that sounds good. You know, um, we can try it and see if it works, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and I'm okay with, you know, even you want to do 7 o'clock or 8 o'clock, whatever, you know. But the earlier it is, the better because mm-hmm. it kind of centers, centers me. It's just um, sometimes that early in the morning, I ain't brush my teeth. So, yeah. but um, I'm willing to try it because I'd rather have it early, mm-hmm. do it early, you know. And then, like I said, I can always go back to sleep. But what I do in the morning sometimes, you know, well, not sometimes, what I do in the morning before I even get out of bed, I, you know, say my prayers, talk to God before I talk to anybody, even mm-hmm. my husband. And then I also put on my armor every day. Mm-hmm. And then I do go get up and you know, start my day. You know, so um, okay. I'm gonna start doing that too. <laughs> yeah, and that armor. I don't know if you have a Bible in the hotel. But I know. Yeah, I have a Bible right here. Yeah, because sometimes they take. I know it's all hotels. They used to have them at every hotel, but I know the hotels I've been seeing it lately. They didn't have. I don't know if people are still them or they don't put them in there. No, nah, I think they starting to like not put them in there no more. Um, but this is this is you know this town is old school. They ain't gonna get rid of no holy Bible. <laughs> Yeah, and the armor breaks it down what each piece is, and I actually literally visualize myself put each piece on. What scripture was that? I'm putting them on. I'm interpreting them what they how they mean what they mean to me and how I can apply them to my life. Mm -hmm. You know, um, for instance, the shield of faith. You know, um, 
I'll say, you know, God, you know, increase my faith or whatever it is that I need for that particular piece of armor. Uh-huh. You know, I add extra stuff to it. And, um, but it's, it has been really, really helpful. Um, and even if I get encounter something during the day, I, re- I remember to put it back on. Mm-hmm. Or did I, you know, because sometimes I have to put it on more than one time because certain situations would trigger stuff. But I was watching um, this basketball player, um, his documentary. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know if you heard it. His name is Ron Artes. Artes, Ron- Ryan Arnest. Ar- 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 Ron Arnest. Or something. Uh, our test. Our test. Our test. My bad. <laughs> yeah, he was sharing his story. It, if you get a chance, it was really good. I was really surprised at um, some of the stuff he shared and what because he had a lot of anger problems mm-hmm. and um, he was always getting in trouble on the, on the court and um, fans was mistreating him, so a lot of stuff. But he had to finally get some help and found that mental illness was in his family and stuff like that but it was just it was just so he was such a good basketball player and I helped him so his father thought would kind of tr- channel his anger but whenever he lose or whenever somebody hit him the wrong way or you know he would just you know respond mm-hmm. you know react I should say because respond is positive so yeah I just thought it was pretty good when he said his name was Ryan I really got my ass out of stuff. I was just listening I was like wow mm-hmm. this different stuff was happening with this family and just so yeah so um just give a better understanding of <clears throat> No. Why we do why we do what we do because it definitely it's in our family mental illness and drug addiction alcohol is all that's in our family so anger you know bullies all that's in our family mm-hmm. my mom was very angry she was a bully so yeah but um I gotta get ready um walk stone no, I appreciate it mom yeah I'll text and, you um, t- tomorrow like when I get up it, when, well when I'm ready to uh and just let me know whenever you're ready and then we'll just you might want to call. Uh-huh. I can <laughs> call you. Text it. I might not get it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my alarm mm-hmm. for 6 o'clock, and that way I know I'll be up. All right. And then I'll check because um, for some reason your phone um, don't always, when I call you, you know, go, sometimes it does go straight to voicemail. But I'm going to set my alarm for 6 o'clock, so we'll just start, try it. Um, at six and just see if that you know because I'm you know like I said sometimes I stay up late sleep late I just get I actually just got on been up like an hour but um yeah I've been I've been messing up a little bit too I've been getting up yeah, like I'm open though I'm yeah. open All right. I'm open to it sound like a good idea it's something I, I always wanted to do with my children so I think I think it's yeah I was good. telling Jalen we gotta start doing she just don't like reading so I was trying, I, you know, I was doing it with them a little bit, but then this, all this stuff started happening, so I ain't really been there. But I, mean, I kind of just, you know how you, you, you don't forget, but you just get away from, you know, you get away from your, what you, what you, what you do. And I'm just trying yeah, to get, I'm trying to get back. Involved, that's when it kind of changes too, because Charles and I had this. We pray once a week, and it's supposed to be Sundays, and I'm like, honey, it's Thursday. We pray, you know. It's like yeah. really, and we, you know, did all this stuff for all these people, but I don't even get to that anymore. They say, look. When it's my turn to pray, we're going back to doing it on I make sure I do it on Sunday. Right. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I remind him, sometimes he remind me. But when other people are involved, it really gets kind of sick. That's why I had my own little moment in God. And I involve other people. But like I said, we'll try it and see if, you know, see if yeah, it works for us. See if it's not like a good idea. Yeah, I just want to keep, like you said, the connection and then also keep God in the middle and start the day like that. I think that's, I think that's real dope. Yeah, the early, the better, because I said, you know, that way, before anything else happened. Yep. All right, Mom. That being said, I'm going to have to set my own.